Hey guys, hey, what's up guys? What is going on? Welcome back. Hope y'all are doing well. Real Madrid versus Barcelona El Clasico. Cancelo, you gotta do better, man. You gotta do better. That defending was awful. Two of those goals were his fault. That was his responsibility. Uh, I don't think that's the main reason why Guardiola didn't want him. Um, I remember when I was watching somewhat, paying attention, not really, uh, and he was playing in City, which I liked them. I liked uh, how he played in City. There were times that I think Guardiola was giving out some kind of instruction and you could see Cancelo wasn't having it. And then the following game when I saw him on the bench, I I was not surprised because, you know, you don't play around with though, with Pep. There's no playing around with Pep. Um, so when he ended up going to Bayern Munich, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't a surprise. That, that made sense. Um, obviously, nobody knows the interior, the, the real motives and what exactly was going out, but there was a falling out. I'm sure he didn't like being on the bench. Then again, nobody likes being on the bench. I completely understand that. I, I'm surprised Rafinha's not leaving because, you know, he's he's been in that role many times. Uh, and I think it's justified when it comes to Rafinha. But Rafinha played good. I, I like the way he played uh, in this game. Ever since he's playing with PSG, I like what, what he's been doing. But Cancelo... Cancelo, that first, that like, you made Vasquez, and, and let me tell you, Vasquez was one of those players that I just didn't un understand how he was playing football, let alone in Real Madrid. This guy I thought belonged in like uh, Espanol, uh, Real Sociedad, or maybe Coventry <laughs> in the championship, just somewhere else, not in Real Madrid. Uh, but he did get better. I did notice this season, like, whoa, when I saw him play, I was like, who is that? Is that Cristiano or is that Vasquez? Um, and yeah, you can say he was probably man of the match um, with the with the two, with the goal, the assist, and I think there was two assists from him. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the penalty also. I, that's kind of an assist, right? So uh, you know, he had a really good game, but he he, he made he made Vasquez look good in that first one. There was no way he already beat him. He already got to the ball before, but then somehow he lost him. I don't know what he was trying to do. I don't know if he was trying to just cover the ball and let the ball go uh, out of bounds uh, for a goal kick, but he ended up just squirming his way, Vasquez, somehow over Cancelo, and I don't blame Kubarsi, 17, the inexperience, you know, leaving your foot out like that, what do you think is going to happen? That almost seemed like something, you know, something, I mean, that's what you see when we're playing for fun at the park, right, pickup games. And and if you call a foul while you're playing these pickup games, I mean, people are just going to laugh at you. You know, it's the same sport. We're playing the same sport, but at the same time, it doesn't even seem like it's the same sport because you'll never get that as a foul <laughs> in a pickup game, right? Or even, well, maybe, yeah, official pickup games, official Sunday league games, as they call them. But to me, it wasn't a foul. It wasn't a penalty, but I understand how that could be given a penalty, too. Going back to Cancelo, that was, that was all on you. That was all on you. The second one was also, uh, it was on him. I mean, where was he when Vasquez was coming in? And great definition, great strike by Vasquez, amazing. Uh, I didn't think he was going to do it. I didn't think he was going to, I thought it was going to go all the way up. And it was just going to be one of those moments like, oh, you could have won the game. You could have tied the game. I think at that point they ended up tying. Uh, but no, he got there just in time and beautiful strike, beautiful strike. But where was Cancelo? Cancelo was, <laughs> Cancelo was like, he had no clue that Vasquez was right behind him. Like, he had no idea. You could tell, like, huh? Like, what? Like, I didn't know he was behind me. He was lost. Lost. Um, and that sucks because there is a really good player in Cancelo. I really, really like Cancelo. Um, I used to refer to him as uh, Silky AF Cancelo. Um, and, you know, he still has that. Uh, he's just got to work on that marking and decision-making also. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what kind of football he's playing but that the reality he's he's in he needs to step out of that and and, and get back to basics really with, especially with the defending um there was also some screwing up on madrid's uh, side with uh, lunin lunin in the beginning when um i think it was lewandowski that pressured him and he was trying to clear the ball and ends up giving it to rafinha and rafinha thankfully was not expecting that and is not He's just not that elite player that everyone makes him out to be. That he should be. He should be. He's Brazilian, after all. Um, ends up because I don't think it was even that hard of a strike when uh, Lunin, uh, Lunin tries to clear the ball, and he got saved. That could have been. I think that was like the seventh minute, sixth minute, or something. That could have been a goal. That could have been a huge error. Now there was another one that he committed, which was the goal, the Christensen goal. To me, that was that was on. That was on Lunin, the horrible coming out clearance, and he just 
yeah, I don't know what he was doing. He was like, uh, like they say in no man's land. I mean, he was in some kind of land, but he wasn't in, in, in this game. He was not in this game. I don't know what he was thinking. Beautiful curve uh, from, from Rafinha. I, I mean, I think that's the best thing that Rafinha does. The curving, you know, every time with his corners, they're just poisonous poisonous you know you think uh, they're going one way and they just completely swerve so i i don't completely blame loon and that was a nice really nice center it, it seems easy you're just gonna go kick the ball in a center no but the way rafinha kicks the ball the, that bend that he puts at the end it's 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 amazing it's elite uh, that's that's about elite as uh, rafinha can get that was on loon and now what i think and i'm the only one i think that's a proponent when it comes to keppa i had no problem yeah he made mistakes but keep him. He's newly arrived. He's got to get uh, used to... Obviously, you can't afford that luxury of him, you know, taking his time while they're scoring goals and Madrid's, you know, losing points. But it seems that they're okay when there's a Marcelo or a Vinicius or a Rodrigo and they're not scoring goals and they're holding back the team. They're hindering the team. It looks like Madrid has no, no problem with that. But Kepa, man, Kepa had to be subbed right away. He needed to be switched over. Lunin had to come and take his place. And I do agree. I'm not saying switch him because of those two errors from, from Lunin that you should replace him with Kepa. No, I'm not saying keep Lunin, of course. He's already there. He's already acclimated. He's already been playing for a while, so keep him. But to to say that Kepa needed to go away, I still don't agree with that, that he needed to be subbed. No, he didn't need to be subbed. In my opinion, I don't think he should have been subbed. But yeah, Madrid makes some mistakes. Um, Kamavinga, another one that comes to mind, getting just pretty much blazed by Lamine Mall, and I did appreciate this time his speed. He's got that nice burst of speed. He got burned a couple, a couple of times by, by Lamine Mall, Kamavinga, and there was the sub. They made the right decision in subbing him. Vinicius, bro, bro, come on, man. I want to talk about that Kunde little altercation. Like, there was nothing there. I get it, Kunde kind of just like fell off, but no reason why you need to go and, and start a fight. I mean, that just, I was, I was reading red all over that. Red card, sent off, all over that play. Bro, use your head. We're talking about Real Madrid. I know they have everything when it comes to infrastructure. All the resources you want. There has to be a psychologist. There has to be some kind of professional PhD. Two PhDs, a uh, guy that, 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 that could help him out. Needs to have a talk to this guy and change his psychology and his outlook on, on these plays. I know it's part of the game. It happens. But, man, it seems to happen more often with uh, Vinicius. You know, he's, he's got to cool down because he's... A key player they need him especially against Bayern Munich I know it has nothing to do with La Liga but you never know he punches someone and he gets suspended for La Liga for Champions League and you do not want to have that so yeah he, he needs to cool down he needs to find a way to cool down I don't know he needs to sip some caipirinhas or something but he needs to cool the hell down um, and he had some he had some chances too, to to be able to win this game uh, the really nice ball from Jude uh, and the yeah, the finish needed to. He needs to work on that finish. Uh, but the run was good. I thought he wasn't gonna get there. I thought the ball was way, way too hard for, for Vinicius, and he ended up somehow making it there. And uh, the finish. That's all. That's all that needed. Like it was a good play. He just needed to do the finish. And then Lunin, with a really, really good, or maybe not. Maybe it was a lucky, the lucky bounce over Pedri, but really good uh, counterattack after I think it was uh, Joao Felix with the uh, with the corner kick and the volley. I felt that he Vinicius Jr. wanted to. He should have kicked it way before it, but he was trying to get away from his marker so he could have enough, you know, more time to be able to shoot the ball more comfortably. But it ended up making things worse, and it pretty much got away from him. He needed to shoot from an uncomfortable position and didn't get really, like, a good uh, solid uh, strike on, on the ball. So that was a missed opportunity. Overall, look, the game was was fun. It was good. It was I think it was more possession from Barcelona at one point. It seemed like Barcelona was going to come back. Uh, credit to Barcelona. Barcelona, I thought, had a really good game. Uh, this guy got injured it seems it didn't seem like it was um didn't seem like there was nothing there but obviously when you go and you collide with uh Valverde went with everything first of all uh you could tell he didn't want to lose that ball there was no way he's going to lose that ball he wasn't really shooting it was just like he was just going to go and you know definitely not give it away to De Jong I guess the way he went in he probably didn't go as hard he just left this when you left when you leave your foot dangling like that and the other guy's coming with everything you gotta there's gotta be some resistance so he should have added some tension to his foot so, to avoid whatever injury that he had either on his ankle or maybe on his knee uh, maybe it's a, a a recurring of his old injury hopefully not uh, I know that's a very valuable player for Barcelona even Rafinha I thought had a good match had to be subbed <laughs> saw he wasn't too happy with that a lot of these players weren't too happy with that um, but it made sense he wasn't really doing much I think there was a pop fly that Rafinha got instead of trapping it on one go because they're on Madrid side 
and you need to be quick about it. He traps it with his chest, I think his shoulder, I think his thigh, and then finally his foot. Dude, if you're playing at that level, you're playing for Barcelona, it's got to be one drop. At max two, right? Uh, so he ended up uh, being subbed, and he wasn't too happy about that. What's his name? Uh, Vinicius also wasn't happy about being subbed, even though, look, you had chances. And I do agree, I, I didn't feel like he should have been subbed. Uh, and pulling, putting in some like Jose Lu, <laughs> I don't know, man. He, I mean, I guess he did Jude Bellingham a, a favor uh, by missing the ball, not on purpose because he was trying to get a heel flick. Uh, he was trying to score a, a nice little cheeky goal. Um, but yeah, I don't think he should have came on. <laughs> you know, they should have just left uh, Vinicius. But Vinicius, you had your chances and you you, you didn't finalize, dude. You, you got to do better than that. I thought Rodrigo also had a really good game. Fermin uh, Lopez also with the goal. I thought he had a really good game. Love the. Love the attitude of this kid, you know, uh, more so than Gavi. Gavi is, it just seems like he just wants to fight everybody. But this guy Lopez, he has that desire to want to to wanna win every ball, all 50-50 balls, you know. And, and going up against someone like Rudiger also, respect, man, respect. Because that guy is, he's nuts. He's a little bit like Vinicius too. He's a little bit uh, wayward thinking. But also like Rudiger. You need someone like Rudiger. He's pretty much their Arujo uh, for Barca. So I'm glad that they, they kind of cancel each other out. There's a little bit of tussling in the corner kicks and just like, you know, grabbing each other and wrestling on the floor. Uh, but all in good sport. Rudiger, you know, picks him back up and stuff like nothing. Nothing. There's no uh, malice in there uh, at all. So really good. Really good game. Uh, very entertaining game. Lewandowski, a little bit too much complaining from Lewandowski. I understand he's a striker. He gets he gets targeted a lot, you know, with the hit and the and the kicking. But if he could pull back a little bit on the complaining, I think he'd, he'd be a, a great player, you know, a great addition. He still is, obviously, a great addition to Barcelona, but just sometimes very slows the game down. Everything's a hit. Every time holding his face, uh, always checking if there's, like, blood, you know, because he just got, like, he just, there was contact on his face. But again, nothing out of control where he's uh, constantly on the floor like, uh, like other players. Uh, June Bellingham, I mean, 10 out of 10 with that last strike. That was... That was awesome. That, that was great. And just the ground that he's covering, the the marking, that never give up attitude that he has. Awesome to watch. Awesome to watch. I could watch that guy all day. Madrid. Madrid seemed like they're going to be champions now. So maybe congrats. Maybe not. We'll see. Pretty much. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.